Okay, so we're now recording. So welcome to a UNCG Libraries webinar on using SAGE research methods with Amy harris Halk. Uh, and Amy, you can take it from here. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you, Sam, for the introduction, Enrico. Um, okay, so yes, today we're gonna talk through some parts of SAGE research methods. Um, I'm gonna show you a lot of cool stuff that they have in there that maybe you don't know about, maybe you don't know about some of it. Maybe you've never clicked on SAGE research methods before or even know that we have it. Uh, but my goal is by the end of our time together that you will know where it is and some information about what's inside of it. And yes, I'm Amy. I am the librarian for counseling and educational development, information library and research sciences and teacher education. And also, as you will soon be able to tell, Sage Research Methods fangirl. Um, this is a link to the slides. I will paste it in the chat at the end um, and you can come back to these slides. There's lots of links to various things that you will be able to click on later. Okay, so I'm just going to dive right in. What is SAGE Research Methods? So SAGE Research Methods is a database about research. So it doesn't contain, it's, it's not a like what you would think of as a typical library database that contains articles on a topic or articles, um, you know, from journals in a specific field. It's not like that at all, which is, I think, why it kind of flies under the radar for a lot of people. And you can find it on the library's database list. We're going to see what happens when I click on a link here. I'm pretty excited to find out what happens. Hey, cool. So in case you're wondering how to get to the library databases link from the library's homepage. If you go to the databases link and it is under S for Sage Research Methods. Um, you will probably you will also find it on um, some of our subject specific research guides. I know probably won't surprise you at all to know that I have linked it on all of my guides. So if you are in one of the departments that I mentioned earlier, you have this on your guide. But if you don't, you can always come to this S section of the databases list and find Sage Research Methods. Oh wait, I should actually show it to you, shouldn't I? I mean, we'll we'll go back and forth between presentation and database. All right, but I don't want to give it. I'm not going to give it all away now. That's the hardest part for me. Oh, hold on, off campus today, and of course it's going to ask me to do this, even though I did this 15 minutes ago. No, less than that, please. All right. Here we go. So, can wait, maybe. Okay, this is session would be pretty boring if um, we couldn't actually get into Sage Research Methods. So what you can see when you log in is a search box. We will talk about what you can search by going to the search box, but first I wanted to kind of go into a little bit more depth on the different types of content that you'll find in here, since I've already told you that it's different than your typical library database. So the first thing we're going to talk about is books and reference materials. And I have subtitled this slide doing research about doing research, which sounds like a very librarian thing to do, but it's really great for everyone. So Sage Research Methods has a huge collection of books and handbooks on doing research. Um, I think these are probably um, a little bit more old school at this point, but um, the little green books and the little blue books have been um, are, are research handbooks that have been extremely popular over the years. Um, they're kind of introductory for you know, learning specific concepts about research. 
Um, and yeah, the green ones are for quantitative, the blue ones are for qualitative. And um, one of the examples here is participatory action research. And if you come to it, you can just see again, it's it's an ebook. So we've got five chapters on what participatory action research is, how it works. Yeah, you can read. So um, so it has a lot of books like this. So it has, again, this is one of the little blue books. In fact, they're not all blue or green, but they are called the little blue books and the little green books. It also has a lot of handbooks. So these are, you know, similar. So they really they cover in depth one specific research method. And I think this one is called Principles and Methods of Statistical Analysis. These are all located again in full text in Sage Research Methods. You can search. You, know, you can look at specific chapters, link specifically to a specific part of an ebook. Um, so I think as far as ebook platforms go, this is a really good one. It seems it's very readable to me. So I really like really like this, this, the ebooks in Sage Research Methods. And all of these books you can keyword search in the search box that I showed you a minute ago, but these are all also linked through the library catalog. So you may have been in Sage Research Methods and not been aware of it um, by searching for a book in the catalog and kind of going through the library catalog to Sage Research Methods. So also in Sage Research Methods, there are a lot of searching and filtering options. So um, while knowing that the full text of the books exists and is in there, that's wonderful. But probably what you're going to be doing most of the time is keyword searching for information. So we can do that here. This is something I probably shouldn't admit that. Never mind. Um, if you need to look up a research term, you can come in and find all different types of information. Hey, there's a, a video. That's pretty cool. So here's an overview video, 10 minutes long. I can learn about ANOVA in 10 minutes. And some more videos. So yeah, so it also includes videos. So it kind of depends on how you would like to consume your information if you would like to watch a video, you can do that. And these are all available through here with transcripts. I'll make you watch this because we only have 30 minutes together, but just know all the videos are available in Sage Research Methods and transcripted. Um, we also have, if, if you don't like videos, let's say, you know, when you do a Google search these days about how to do something and all these video results come up and I prefer having a list, you know, I'm like, just tell me, tell me what to do, give me steps and I'll go that way. You can use the filters on the side to limit to particular types of information. So let's say I just want a quick definition. So I just want a dictionary definition of ANOVA. I don't want to read a whole book about it. I don't want to watch a 10 minute video. I just want a dictionary definition. So it gives me the dictionary, the dictionary of statistics and methodology. And here I can see the entry, the entry on ANOVA. So this is just, again, it's just brief information. If that's what I'm looking for, just a quick definition, you are able to limit just to books and reference sources. There's a lot of other ways to limit as well. While we're waiting for the little circles to stop spinning, um, you can limit to a specific, you know, like I limited the dictionaries, but you can also limit to all these other things. If you really want to see a video, you can watch just videos, podcasts, expert insights, all these sorts of things. You can limit just to those. You can also limit to particular disciplines, which is really nice. 
So um, you here you can choose one or multiple disciplines and see, you know, how a specific research methodology is applied in a discipline. So that's really nice. And it actually has for education, which I'm a fan of, it has some kind of subdisciplines listed here. Similarly, health and medicine has the same thing. So you can get pretty specific here. So let's say um, that I'm interested in search go back to participatory action research because I think that's an interesting research methodology. So there's a lot, a lot of resources, but you know I can limit to oh, it did that for me. How nice. So it limited because I already clicked the box to sources that own, that talk about participatory action research in education specifically. So, you know, this may look really different in education versus in, you know, health sciences or whatever. So this is a good way to find out information about a specific research method in a specific disciplinary context. So this is a nice, this filtering option is nice. And I use the, um, the discipline filters a lot. You can also filter um, by specific products. Uh, Sage Research Methods is kind of a um, an umbrella for several smaller things that we'll talk about a little bit later. So I generally ignore this, um, but you can also limit to a particular publication date range if that is of interest to you. If you want newer information on a topic, you can very easily limit to that as well. So there are a lot of filters and ways to narrow down your searches. So we've got, again, oh, sorry. Um, this is kind of your big list, and then it breaks down into content types, publication date, disciplines. That's really small because there are so many of them that I had to make it really small to fit on the screen. But you can see it by going to Sage Research Methods. All right. So that is a very quick overview of how to search through content in Sage Research Methods. Try to keep an eye on the time because I have a tendency to get overly effusive with things and I want to be respectful of everyone's time. So we are now going to move on to talking about data sets. So in addition to these books and reference materials, Sage Research Methods also has a big collection of data sets that you can use. And all of these links should take you to the specific parts that we're discussing. So if you're like, I just want to check out the data sets, you should be able to click on that link um, in the presentation to take you straight to this page. So you can see here again, we have a lot of options for ways to browse data sets. So we got the disciplinary browse, we've got methods. You can look at specific methods if you're interested in looking that way. They also break it down into quantitative and qualitative if you're really interested in one or the other. Um, you can break it down by collection we own. So not, not to go too far like behind the, the scenes, but we buy these collections of data sets. So this shows you just all the ones that we have purchased. Um, and we have, as you can see, a large number of them. So again, you can come in and see what, you know, if you're interested in qualitative methodology, you can come in and see all these different types that we have. So we have ethnographic field notes, we have focus group transcripts, interviews, letters, photographs, political speeches, so all these different things. I'm going to use audio files because I think that's interesting. And then when you click on one of these, you can see it gives you the ability to learn how to use specific tools to work with data sets. So we have an option here to use in vivo to work with um, a data set of audio files, and then we have one here for Atlas TI. So Atlas TI is something that I recently taught myself how to use 
um, and in retrospect, really should have probably leaned more heavily than I did on Sage Research Methods to learn how to use it. But this actually gives you the ability to, you know, work with an actual data set and learn how to use it in Atlas TI. And that can be really nice if you, you know, if you're not sure if, you know, a particular tool like Atlas TI is going to meet your needs. Um, it This enables you to kind of practice and see what the system can do without, you know, investing a lot of time or collecting all this data and then finding out that you're not going to be able to use the tool that you thought you were going to be able to use to, you know, to to work with the data. So it, it can just kind of help you get experience using particular tools to deal with data, low stakes data, data that is not data that's not yours. So again, you have some screenshots of all the options. We have some the two options, the two examples that I just showed you. And um, another thing that's really nice, this is a pretty new addition to Sage Research Methods, is that they have some resources related to how to teach students to work with these data sets using these tools. So they provide these two case studies from other universities that talk about how these universities have used Sage Research Methods to teach, um, to teach students how to work with data sets. Um, and they also have this really nice site, Sage Research Methods Teaching, that gives you sample presentations, worksheets, assignments that folks have actually used um, to with Sage Research Methods. And you can see they have a cool word cloud here. You're like, oh, I'm interested in teaching students about focus groups. You can see some um, like syllabi presentations, worksheets that other folks have done, um, you know, but like real, real faculty have used to teach these concepts using Sage Research Methods. So this can be extremely helpful if you're like, you know, I really want my students to learn, you know, how to use Atlas TI. Well, you can find resources here that will show you how other folks have been able to do that or have used Sage, Sage Research Methods to do that. All right, so the next thing that I wanted to show you is actually, well, I don't want to say it's one of my favorite parts. They're all my favorite parts, is the project planner. And this is something I show to graduate students a lot who are working either on their own research projects or thinking about their dissertations or their theses or whatever. Um, it provides step-by-step -step guidance through the entire research project. And again, this is just linked within Sage Research Methods. And it does, I think, a really good job of, of helping you see the big picture and also break down this process into its finite steps. So when I show this to folks, I don't necessarily say like, hey, you need to follow this like a roadmap, you know, but it's a good, you know, it's a nice thing to like consult and kind of see what's in here. And it also can be really helpful if you find yourself stuck at any point. So, um, you know, this is developing a researchable question. So it has some information here. It explains how to do these things. It links you to resources about each question or about each, you know, each subtopic within the um, this larger topic, you know, when will I know what my research question is? How will I know if it's suitable? You know, so it just kind of it it gives you some questions and some resources to consult if you are feeling stuck or lost. I like these little checklists also. Um, if you like work through one of these sections, it'll show you you know, here are seven questions to ask yourself. So I think this is really helpful for researchers who are starting out um, and maybe haven't thought about the process as a whole and, and what it, you know, what, what this whole process actually entails. It can kind of help you break down this, you know, doing a research project into smaller, more manageable steps. And um, I think it does a really nice job of just kind of providing 
an overview of what that process looks like, again, with lots of links to um, additional information and, you know, things that will be helpful for you as you undertake this process. So, um, you know, this dissemination part is really interesting. It has a section on, you know, turning your thesis into usable research, how to write a book, how to publish a journal article, how to present, uh, you know, how to be, you know, disseminate your information publicly using blogs and social media. So this is this one I think is particularly interesting because I don't know um, if researchers often think beyond like, okay, I'm writing an article, okay, I'm writing my dissertation, but thinking about all these other things like, you know, raising public awareness of your research, like, you know, maximizing your impact and those sorts of things, making sure it's discoverable. So these are just kind of some interesting things to think through when you undertake a research project. So that's why I really like it. Um, like I said earlier, um, when I when I need directions to something and I search YouTube, I want a list of directions and not a video that tells me how to do it. This is a nice list of things to think through um, as you're undertaking your research project. So the last thing I wanted to show you is just a couple of other cool things um, that are in Sage Research Methods that I like folks to know about. They have this new module that they have recently added called Diversifying and Decolonizing Research. This has, um, like, it has case studies, it has data sets, it has videos, um, and it's, it's just an interesting, I guess I think this has come out in the past year, but you can learn if this is something you're interested in, you can learn more about this specifically, and I like that they have it all together sort of in one package. Similarly, I think this is fun. I'm not a quantitative researcher, but I think this is interesting. Um, it's, it's like a BuzzFeed quiz, except instead of telling you what kind of cheese you are, it gives you um, recommendations for which statistical method to use with your data. So this is just a nice, a nice thing to know about if you're stumped. Um, it can help you make some decisions. And then this one, this one doesn't really work for me, but I like to show it to people because I think some people it really works for their brains. Um, this is a research methods map. And what you can do here is kind of go through and just kind of click through and see related terms and, um, you know, it just kind of helps you browse through how different methods are related to each other. Um, again, this is your, and then it will show you once you get to a a term or, you know, it will also, instead of just kind of clicking through here, it will give you links to all the relevant content on a particular method. So, you know, if you're interested in learning more, you're like, okay, you know, I have to do this mixed method study. I don't really know that much about it. You can go through and, you know, learn a little bit more about within these specific topics and then once you get to one that's interesting or relevant you can easily grab all the content in sage research methods on that topic so i just like to point that out for folks who are interested in that sort of approach to research and i think it is helpful for seeing those connections and those you know, sort of getting uh, more specific to getting like more general um, so that's another thing. So to see all of these things individually, you are mostly going to find them on this main page. So this is the page that you click on when you come um, into Sage Research Methods. So again, we have this search box here, but below that we have all of these things that we've talked about. I didn't really talk about cases, but cases are interesting. Um, they just are basically kind of conversations with researchers on specific methods. Um, there's also the podcast if you prefer that. 
Um, and then we have you know some information here about data visualization. So there's just a lot, there's a lot in here. So you can see again, these are the, the methods tools. You can create your own reading list. So I've said this a lot of times, and I will say it one more time. There is a lot of information in Sage Research Methods. <laughs> and I highly recommend taking some time to just dig around and find things that are interesting to you in here. All right. Oh, and there's also a link here to training resources. So if you want to know more about a specific part, you know, Sage has provided all sorts of information about, um, you know, specific pieces, how to use the products and, and all of that. So that's all available on their website. So thank you. That is all I have for you today. Um, again, the slides are available at go.uncg.edu slash SRM2024, which I will also put in the chat. I think I stopped sharing. Stop sharing. Okay. Thank you. Mm. Um, okay. Does anyone have any questions for Amy? Amy, you may have mentioned this and maybe I missed it. Um, uh, which aspect of this do you use the most? Do you find the most useful in your work? Um, searching for particular methods is what I use most often um, because a lot, you know, I, I work with a lot of graduate students and they sometimes come in with questions based on, you know, about the specific research methodologies that I don't, I'm not familiar with. So I do a lot of reading in the dictionaries and encyclopedias um, just to kind of get a basic overview of what they're trying to do before I meet with them. So I find it most helpful for that. That tends to be the place I go first. Um, in a past life, I might have gone to Wikipedia first, but now I like Sage Research Methods so much. I use that instead. Awesome. Thank you. Do you see Jenny's comment about yes. which stat they're using based on their quiz? I don't know, but I can tell you what kind of cheese I am. Um, actually, I don't know what kind of cheese I am either. I'll figure that out probably. Um, so yeah, but it is, it, yeah, I think it flies under the radar because it doesn't fit neatly into a specific discipline, um, but it really is applicable to folks who do almost any type of research. So whether you do quantitative or qualitative, whether you're in the health sciences or social sciences or humanities, you can find information in there that's relevant to your research. You might not have done this or know the answer to this, Amy, but, um, you know, I saw, you know, of course you can like share a permalink and all that stuff from there, download a PDF. Mm -hmm. Have you ever tried um, embedding it within your Canvas course? I know you, you do teach online, so. I have not since I teach a 100 level class, but it would be interesting to find out if how that works. That would be a good thing. I should do that in a in a, in a hidden page on my Canvas class. You're not teaching them about them. pluralism in your 100 level class? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to ask them what stats test they are. Yeah, um, sure. Okay, well, people are saying thank you in the chat, which I feel like means I think people might start leaving since we just hit 1230. Um, mm -hmm. Please note that this is recorded. You will get an email follow up, um, you know, on the same thread of where you got this email from, um, you know, uh, me, sorry, uh, with the link to this recording, a link to the YouTube, a link to the slides and a link to that assessment. Um, please fill out that assessment if you have time. That just helps us kind of know how we're doing and maybe if you have suggestions for other topics and things like that. Um, the next one coming up could be found on that webinar list. Um, let me just pull it up real fast. Is it, is it you? No. Um, it's on Images on JSTOR by um, Maggie Murphy, um, Wednesday, October 16th at 1 p.m. I think that's next week. <laughs> so uh, be excited. You'll hear about that if you've already signed up soon or if you want to sign up. Um, here is the link on that webinar thing. Again, it's at the top. Um, and then Amy's going to do one on Jackson, Jackson Library Renovations on November 21st at 1 p.m. Um, so if you're interested in that, um, Amy will be back. Um, there's the, that's the form again. Oh, that's the form to sign up for webinars. Okay, not the assessment form. So both forms are in the chat now.
Um, so are there any final questions or comments um, for anyone? From anyone? I feel really tired today. I feel like I didn't go to bed that late. <laughs> Um, but I learned a lot of stuff from this session. Amy, thank you. This is, of course, I'm a librarian, but I think this is a really useful tool. Um, and uh, like I've used it before, but I definitely found some stuff today that I was like, oh, cool. I haven't done that um, or haven't used that. I was just thinking, actually, I'm writing an article and I was like, oh, I could use some of these definitions. Yes. OK. Yes, so, absolutely. Great. Thank you all for um, being here. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. And hopefully I'll see you all around. Bye.